Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Cryptocurrency channel. After yesterday's massive success with Cardano, we're going to update the Cardano chart. Looking like we're running into a minor bit of resistance at the 50% Fib. Bitcoin needs an update. We are in our little safe zone and we're trending sideways with a slight bias to the downside. So we're going to update that. Plus look at a look at Ethereum, Ethereum Classic shooting to the moon. Dogecoin in the lead up to Elon Musk's Saturday Night Live skit and a few other altcoins which I love the look of for this part of alt season. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, join us for the journey, bell notification icon, like the video up, goes a long way to helping out the channel for free. Take a second, do that, I'm doing my own sound effects now. Let's dive into the video. Starting with the market caps, we have $2.35 trillion in the entire cryptocurrency space at the moment. This is the highest it has ever been. However, Bitcoin is about eight or so thousand dollars off its all time high. So money is obviously flowing in and going into other areas. Plus, some of the lower caps are getting bought up. So they're getting supply shortages. Even Ethereum is getting close to 400 billion. And of course, we have a little bit of a supply shortage over on Ethereum. So it can make the market caps look bigger than they actually might be. Looking at Binance, nearly at $100 billion. Dogecoin, $75 billion. Some of the coins we're going to look at today are Ethereum Classic, which has shot to number 13 at $15 billion. So it's up nearly 300% on the week. And the other legacy coins which are going nuts are EOS, $11 billion, up nearly 100% on the week. And Litecoin is finally making a move up only 35%. And it's sitting at around $360, so getting close to its all-time high of around $420. Uh, the other legacy stuff is Stellar, and that's had a little bit of a move, only 24%. It tends to move when Ripple moves as well, so XRP is up here at $72 billion, $1.59. I think that will make a move soon, but we're just looking for a little bit more consolidation. Uh, the other coins that I'm liking the look of are Monero here. So I've got Monero because it is the old school privacy coin and it has stuck with that all along. So if you're interested in keeping your anonymity in the space, then Monero is the coin you go with. The thing I like with Monero is you can still get it on some of the good exchanges. You've got Binance, you've got Hobie, Bitfinex, Kraken, and it is also on SwiftX, which I'll show you in just a sec. Overall, just doing an overview here, the dollar value is at all time highs. Basically, let's call it $500. The previous all-time high was around $480, $485. This was back in 2008. Now, the one I'm more interested in is the Bitcoin value. Look at this yellow chart here. So it's the yellow line behind the green line. We are on a solid up move here. And that's what we want to see if we're going to hold something long term. I'm not saying this is a stable coin, but I might consider using some Monero as not a stable coin, but something to hold longer term the anonymity i love the privacy i love and the fact that it's going up against its bitcoin value after hitting a floor sets us up in a good position rather than buying something at the top of a market like like it was back in 2017 2018 you just lose all your bitcoin value but now i think we've hit a floor and we're heading back up and i would be very surprised if we don't go up much further from here and we, we took out this bottom. So I'd be surprised if that happened. I think we're pretty good to go with Monero. So on to SwiftX. This is our portfolio here. We're up 56%, 15,600 US dollars. Not too bad. I suspect Sol is going to have a bit of a hard time just for the next few days. Uh, we've done a lot of analysis on that. So check that out on the channel. The graph still in consolidation. Polkadot looks like consolidation at high levels, which is good. We're getting a move on with Link. And Cardano, of course, has had a stellar run at the moment. So some of our portfolio is stagnant while it is in consolidation mode. And the other part of our portfolio is uh, going up in value. So it's not necessarily 50-50, but this is kind of a balanced-ish portfolio. These are stable. These are moving. At least the portfolio is moving. Not everything has to move at once because when that happens, then it all sinks at the same time. Let's have a look at the charts now. And Cardano, I'm going to start here. We're on a weekly chart. So this is the macro view. Let's take some of these lines off so you can just see what's going on. We've moved into new all-time highs. That was yesterday. So uh, like I was, I was explaining was the GAN rule, the fourth time at tops and then a breakout. I'm not just looking at simple support and resistance, which I absolutely love, but we're, we're also adding in 
traditional uh, GAN analysis, GAN rules. It was for an old 1900s trader. Check his stuff out. Look for the books. Amazing stuff if you want to learn a little bit more. So he was ab- actually a, a genius of the day. So uh, anyway, that's GAN. This is where I learned. Looking at the daily chart, uh, we're here to see what is going on. Now, two big days up. Let's get some volume here. This button right there. We had good volume on the break and we had a high close. That's what we want to see. This is the 50% level. That's of a major range. I have taken the COVID crash low, anchored it to that low, anchored it to the next high that we had the peak in February, which is the day that I was talking about selling. Then we anchor it to the next low and our 50% level comes out at $1.67. And you saw yesterday, the market hit $1.76. So it's just a few cents above, but it wicked above, fine. And then the close was just basically a few cents below, yeah, two cents below the 50% level. 50% levels, the significance and the importance of those is that they can be price resistance areas. We tend to see markets pull up at 50%, just like we saw uh, this level here, 83 and a half cents. This is a major range and the market just fell a few cents short of it. It wicked down and came back up. So that was when Cardano dropped on the 23rd of April and hit the 89 cents level. The point here is to pay particular attention to the 50% because they will give you good areas of support and resistance and help you understand what a market is doing. So yesterday we saw the market boom. This is the example. It boomed, it took out the highs, it closed high, fantastic. It hit the 50% level and had a bit of a reverse. And today it's taking a breather. Some people will get out because they are unsure. They don't know what they're doing. But if you have these tools and you understand what they're about, then you can say, all right, it's a 50% level. I get it. It will rest, it'll hit it, use it as some sort of uh, price resistance. And then give it a few days and I think we'll probably break out of this area after we've accumulated above the old highs. It just allows you to read the market and not react to news or emotions. That's the beauty about it. So uh, that's a nice update on Cardano. Just after the next day, it's done what we were thinking it would do. The probabilities were in our favor. And this next stage of hitting the 50% and having a rest today is still in our favor. Let's drop it down to a four hour. I know how much people love four hours. This shows you the importance of 50%. And this is on a macro 50%, remember. So we're using the weekly 50%. I've got to, got to understand the differences between using different time frames. A lot of people will just look at the four hour chart. I've seen it across YouTube and they'll just talk about the four hour chart. And it's like, you know, the, the market's gonna go up, market's gonna go down. It's a four hour chart. It doesn't really give you long-term perspective. If you want long-term perspective of what's going to happen in the next several weeks or months, like we do on our time-based analysis, then you need to use macro um, macro charts, macro analysis. I've got the majors here. Here's my low. Red line, this diagonal to the top, to the next major low. All right, so that's what we're using for now because this is the numbers that the market has given us. Let's bring it down to one hour. We were just on a four, but let's go to one hour. And you can see just how many times we've hit the 50%. We tried once, we tried again. Looks like we're going for another attempt here. So I suspect we'll get over at some point, but for now, I'm happy. I'm seeing the market accumulate above the old highs of that $1.55 level. That's exactly what you want to see. This is what we saw on Ethereum before it started taking off again, but people were calling it boring. Sure, we can make fun of ADA and call it a stable coin. I'm happy to do that too. So Cardano, I'm happy. I'm probably going to buy a little bit more there with my uh, SwiftX account. Bitcoin, we are trending down. This is the area that I said was going to be a little bit trickier because we are now seeing potentially lower highs than the previous high. That is a bear, it's not a bear market, but it's a downtrend. Okay, so people are sort of reacting off the one hour and the four hour charts that we saw two days ago when the market took took off, but it really hasn't done anything apart from rally the previous day's losses. That's all. That's all it's done. And ideally, you know what I've got here. My, my target is the numbers above that $60,500 level. Oops, on this. There we go. 60500 That's that bar there. So until we get above that, I'm still see, seeing this as being a sideways, and this is just helping out the altcoin season. First signs of weakness, less than 54K. 
We've been less than 54K once and we reversed above it, but this is lower than this high. Now, why am I using candles? I don't know, but this is what I usually use, is the bars. I just thought I'd put a bit of color in the chart for once. You guys sometimes ask about the color. So onto the white bars, but this, the subtleties here, lower high. This is a swing, lower high. We've got to wait and see what happens from this point, but we've got a lower high on the daily. We've got a lower high on the weekly. One week. There's your top. There's your next top. Should this week close in two and a half days, and then we get a following week down, then we've confirmed a lower top. And that isn't such a great thing at this point in the market. We obviously want to see it continue up, but I'm happy to see that just cool off because that's what we want to see if uh, if we're going to get a sustained like a longer bull market uh okay so from this point we're going to keep watching it there's not much has happened today i just see this lower top and that's another sign so we had the first sign here we've got a second sign here if we can get a bit lower than previous uh than yesterday's bar which would bring us down where am i at my low 55,283 55,288 so if this goes down a little bit further than yesterday there's our second minor signal so signs of weakness here, there's our second little minor signal there. We're still just holding above the 50% level. You know, we talk about that a lot. So we'll keep tra tracking this, but it, at the moment, it's not affecting the altcoin season. I think it'll just be part of the rotation out of Bitcoin into ETH, into the legacies and the other big caps and into the small caps and then whack it all back into Bitcoin and probably take some fiat profits. Ethereum Classic has gone absolutely berserk. This is on a daily chart. So yesterday might be that blow off top that we were expecting. I mean, I haven't looked at Ethereum Classic much, but when you see these patterns, you expect some sort of blow off top. The uh, bullish side to this is that Ethereum Classic hasn't closed above or below its 50% level of the day. I think it's dead on 50%. There, there you go. So $87 for the low. $176 for the high, 50% level is about 132, 131. Bring that down. There you go. So 131, 132, and it closed at 134. So it's just hanging in there until it figures out what it wants to do from this point. That's about all we can do with Ethereum Classic. Maybe we have one more shoot, maybe we don't. But the risk to reward is just way out of whack now that the market has shot up so far. So if you guys that are asking me on Instagram, there's your answer. Join me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are down below. A lot of news on Twitter, a lot of stuff I post there. And on Instagram, I'm answering your Q&As live on video. Dogecoin is at 63 cents. It's pushing. It's trying to push for this last run for the skit on Saturday. Now, we've been up for about two weeks now. A couple of days down isn't going to hurt anyone. It's a nice recovery. Can we get to a dollar? That's going to be around a dollar fifteen if we run this exact same move by 100%. Now, if we just get to our 50% level, that's going to get us to around 80 cents. And if we run it just a little more to the 61%, it's going to be about 90 cents. So I suspect if we don't get that massive drive through on Saturday, or at least the day before, which is basically now in the next 24 to 48 hours, then we may only get a push to the all time high, a little bit lower or 80 cents to 90 cents. That's sort of like the worst best case scenario. Best case, even better, is that we push to around that dollar, dollar ten, and probably flattens out from that point. Maybe a bit of a dip. So looking at reward to risk, shall we only get to the all-time high? You're going to make 15%. We get to the 50% level here, 80 cents, 28%, 61%, about 40%. Should we get to the dollar? There's about 60%. Dollar ten, which is the 100% level, 75. So anywhere from about 15 to 75% is what I think this market uh, has left in it. For me, that's not enough return, especially after massive, massive pumps. I want to go for something a little bit more, and I think Ethereum still has it left in the tank to do more than that. I think we're still going to get into our, I hope, the five-figure levels, but I'll be very happy if Ethereum gets to that five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar level, and then see what the market is showing us from that point. I like this as another recovery before we start to push on again. But if we hold here, great. I love the sideways accumulation, consolidation. People get bored, they leave, they forget. Then they come back when the Ethereum's at like 3,000 or 3,200 saying, is it too late? They're all buying in this area. Sorry if that's you, 
But if it is you, don't make the same mistake. Keep watching the market, keep tracking it daily. Because these were the areas to be buying between 2,000 and 2,500. But it was boring. There was everything across the internet to say, sell Ethereum, go buy ADA, go buy some other altcoin that might pump uh, you know, 10x or whatever. But these are the times to be getting in. And from those points of the lows of $2,000, now we're up 70% and the high was at 75%. So there's what I think Dogecoin could do, but it's in an actual good project that has great fundamentals. Uh, I like Doge, it's fun, but Ethereum is, is the go. Ethereum is going to be the one that has the potential to flip Bitcoin. I'd love to see it, Dogecoin flip Bitcoin. If you would too, let me know in the comments down below. That is our wrap for Ethereum. I think we're looking bullish there. Cardano, I think we're looking bullish. Dogecoin, I don't think there's much left in it but it still has a little bit because of all the news that's coming up soon in the next couple of days, or at least the event. Ethereum Classic may push, but it's just getting way too high for my liking, and the risk to reward is probably not there in my opinion. And basically, as that spikes up, if it doesn't have any sort of consolidation like you see here, then it's on very, very weak grounds to fall over from that point. Bitcoin may be another couple of very minor signs to the bearish side. So obviously we'll keep following that tomorrow. Be sure to stick around, subscribe, bell notification icon, like the video up, goes a long way to helping out the channel. And I really appreciate it for the, you know, the work we're doing here on the videos. Catch me on Instagram, Twitter, join the free newsletter down below, trade with Swiftex and Blockfolio, links are down below. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.